Well, hello and welcome. Welcome to our online service for this week at Homelands. Um, as you can see, um, we're trying something a little bit different this week. Um, I've been stuck in the office for far too long, and so I thought I'd come out and uh, do today's service out and about. We used to do this quite a lot right at the beginning, um, but probably got into a bit of a rut and stayed in the office. Anyway, um, more about what we're going to do out and about in a moment. Um, but before we do that, um, Arthur is going to lead our prayers for today. And before we hear from Arthur, our singers and musicians are going to lead us in worship. So let's sing. Gracious Lord, we do want to thank you for this opportunity of being able to come and pray to you at this time. We thank you, Lord, for the grace that you show towards us, for the great love that you've poured out upon us. We thank you, Lord, that you've given us salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ. We want to thank you, Lord, that he was so willing to come to this earth to die for us. And Lord, we pray that as people that have come together to listen to your word and to hear what you have to say to us, that we'll be ready to receive that, Lord. We want to pray that you would help us to understand the words that are being spoken, that they will speak into our hearts and draw us out towards you. Gracious Lord, we thank you for all that you've bestowed upon us. We thank you for all the things that we need that you've given to us. And Lord, however poor we might be in this country, we, we realise that compared to the rest of the world, that we're we're rich, Lord. We have lots, and you've poured so much out to us. And Lord, with that in mind, we want to pray for our government that they should look further afield now when it comes to supplying COVID vaccines to the rest of the world. Lord, that they would see their responsibilities and understand the things that they need to do. And Lord, because until the whole world is vaccinated, then there's still going to be problems all along. And we just pray that our government will have the courage to be able to give vaccines out to all those that are in need. Lord, we want to pray for the area that we find ourselves in. We thank you, Lord, that uh, we live in a nice area, that we can enjoy the things that are around and about us. But Lord, we just want to think that there are so many things that go on behind closed doors that we don't know about. And we pray, Lord, for a sensitivity in all that we do. We pray that we would be ready to help people, that we would be ready, Lord, to lend a hand where it's needed. 
Lord, we thank you for the way, for the things that you've given us in our church that enables us to help others. We thank you for all the support we get from all of the members. And Lord, we know that the whole is, is greater than the sum of the parts. And we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for the gifts that you've given to church members to serve you. And we pray, Lord, that our church may be a light in this neighbourhood, that we may be able to stand firm. Lord, we pray that you would be with us through these coming weeks, that you would guide us and lead us and help us, Lord, to learn more of you through the home groups, through uh, learning how to pray more, to being committed to you fully. Lord, we pray that there would be that 100% commitment to you for your dear name's sake. Amen. So thank you so much. Arthur for leading us in prayer today and um, to all involved in putting this service together. If you were with us last time, you know that we'd been looking at um, Jesus in the synagogue as we continue our learn, uh, journey through Luke's gospel. And in that part of Luke chapter four, Jesus had taken the scroll of the prophet Isaiah in the synagogue and announced the good news of the kingdom and that the good news had come true in their presence. And in a moment, we're going to look at Luke chapter five, but skipping a little bit. And after Jesus's um, appearance in the Nazareth synagogue, he goes on to demonstrate exactly what he's been talking about. And he reminds um, those perhaps who know him well from his childhood that the gospel is not just for um, the Nazarenes, not just for the Jews, but for the whole world. And he uses Old Testament examples to back up his point of involvement and blessing on those from Sidon and those from Syria and elsewhere. And this doesn't seem to go down very, very well. You can almost imagine in a modern context, the demonstrations, the, uh, the banners, God for the Jews and the Jews alone. And the crowd is whipped up into a frenzy and Jesus does well to mingle and slip away by the power of the spirit. And he goes on, um, Luke records, to um, heal and to heal not only physical illness, but mental illness as well. And this is a demonstration, an early glimpse as to what Jesus's ministry is going to be all about. And we could have lingered um, in Luke chapter four, as Jesus might have lingered in and around Nazareth. But his journey as ours continues, he heads off northeast back back to the lake back to the sea of galilee the reading today is from luke 1 to 11. jesus calls his first disciples one day as jesus was standing by the lake of gennesset the people were were crowding around him and listening to the word of god he saw at the water's edge two boats left there by fishermen who were washing their nets he got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little more from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But as you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that the nets began to break. So they signalled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the son of Zebedee, Simon's partner. Then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid, for now on you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on the shore, left everything and followed him. God bless this reading. At the beginning of Luke chapter five, Jesus is by a lake, by the Sea of Galilee, and the crowds who've been following him have 
continued and so he finds himself once again surrounded by a crowd. And so what does Jesus do? He gets up and steps into a boat. He goes down all the way to the lake shore and steps into a boat. Maybe um, it's easier for the crowds to see him when he's slightly offshore. He can see more of the crowd and the crowd can see more of him. And also um, the water helps the sound carry that um, the water, not on a day like today when the wind is up and the waves are blowing, but on a still day, you can imagine that the um, water helps the sound carry across the crowd. And so he teaches and it's recorded that the crowd have come to hear the word of God, to hear the word of God. The crowd recognize something of who Jesus is, that he is a prophet, that he is, perhaps they're beginning to see even that he is the son of God, but they've certainly come to hear from God through Jesus. So he preaches and he teaches and at one moment he's had enough or the crowd have had enough and he turns to Peter, to Simon, better said according to Luke. He turns to Simon whose boat he's in and perhaps Andrew, his brother, is there with him and Jesus says let's go fishing, let's go fishing and it's probably a little bit of an odd thing for Jesus to say because he is a carpenter he's a technon a son of Joseph what does he know about fishing from Nazareth and he turns to the master fisherman and says let's go fishing and you can perhaps imagine Simon's frustration he knows the waters he knows that they've been out all night the night before and have caught nothing but he says to Jesus well well, Lord, if you say so, if you say so, we're going to go and give it a go. It'll be futile. You know, there's Peter and Andrew and James and John there in the other boat. And they've been up all night fishing. And they know, as I said, they know what they're doing because they, they're not just kind of jobbing fishermen. They're professionals. It's perhaps easy to forget that um, there was an economy. There was an industry of fishing around Galilee. There were fisher men and then there were processors um, they no doubt had James and John and Andrew and Peter a license from the Roman authorities from a tax collector maybe even Matthew himself to go and fish and they had to give tribute to the Romans for fishing they had to pay for their license they had to give up a huge proportion of their catch because everything as everything in the Roman Empire belonged to Caesar and you couldn't just go and fish in Caesar's lake and not expect to pay for it. But anyway, they set off expecting perhaps to catch nothing. And just as we heard um, two weeks ago, if you're with us, and when Graham spoke to us about the miraculous catch that's recorded in John 21, there are echoes of it here. Perhaps Luke is telling the same story in a different place and a different time of Jesus's ministry. Perhaps these are, are bookends of miraculous catches, but they go onto the sea and they have a huge haul. This time Luke, unlike John, doesn't number the fish, but there are too many. There's a danger of the boats overturning as so much fish is caught. And Peter doesn't know what to think. And as Peter doesn't know what to do in the miracle of the catch, all he can do is respond and fall on his knees and say, Lord, get away from me, I am a sinner. For all good Jews would have known that they mustn't, they cannot be in the presence of the Holy One of Israel. And Jesus says to Peter, as he says to us, he says to James and John and Andrew who would have been with him, do not be afraid, do not be afraid. And this doesn't mean never get scared, never get frightened, but in that moment, do not worry. Do not be concerned for this is a good thing. This is good news. I come to bring you good things. I have plans for you, not for harm, but for good. And so Peter, Simon, better said, doesn't panic. And they bring the haul in. They bring the miraculous catch into shore. 
And Jesus says to Simon, you know what? From now on, we're not going fishing anymore. We're not going fishing anymore, Simon. Now I'm going to make you and Andrew and James and John fishers of people. We're going fishing for people. And this is the call, the beginning of the call to the four, later the 12. And they leave their catch, they leave everything immediately. They don't hang around, they don't sit there and wonder what they're going to do with all of this fish. Now, what do they do? What do they do? They leave everything immediately. For that is one of the lessons for us from this text, I believe, is that we need to be obedient. They were obedient in leaving, they were obedient in going fishing in the first place and they need to be they need to be obedient and we too need to be obedient and we need to be open we need to be open to the possibilities not just do what we're told mindlessly but allow the spirit to move in and through us and be obedient obedient to god's plans and purposes but obedient and open to the call of the spirit open to new things open to not just doing the way we've always done things but open to change open to, as Graham said, casting our nets on the other side of the boat. What are we being called to be open to in a new way in this season? And we need to move onwards as we continue our journey, as Jesus continues his journey, as the disciples continue their journey. We need to be open to what the future may hold, but we need to move. We need to constantly be learning. We shouldn't be the same Christians we were last week, last year, 10 years ago. We need to be open. We need to be obedient we need to be open we need to move onwards to continue on journeying so this week i wonder what fishing is going to look like for you and for me sometimes in the modern world fishing has a kind of negative connotation doesn't it we talk about bait and hooking people and it's not that kind of fishing we're talking about it's how do we make the good news really good news for people how do we make it attractive how do we make it something that will stick how can we be fishing for people this week so i'll leave that with you as a thought maybe you've got some some ideas for us for you um do let me know let somebody in the church know if you if you have if you have a great idea about how we can go fishing but even if you don't in a small way i do hope that this week you can be obedient that we can all be open and that we can all move onwards, continuing this journey out to sea or inland, wherever we are, however our journey takes us. I do pray that we will know Jesus in our lives this week. Let's go fishing and let's sing too. Amen. In my wrestling in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence, you won't let go. In the questions, you
Well, as always, as always, a big thank you to you for joining us this week. I do pray that you'll know God's blessing wherever and whoever you are at this time. But as we go, as we end this time together, let's pray a prayer of blessing. Loving God, we pray that we may know you this week, that we may listen for your voice and we may hear it. We pray that we might be obedient, that we might be open to the movement of the Spirit and that we might journey onwards with you as we fish in the way that you would have us. Help us as we journey this day, this week and all the days of our lives. Amen. Thanks for being with us for our time together here. At the beach is over, so as ever, it is a cheery goodbye from me. Goodbye.